Good morning everyone. Welcome back to the tank series. My name is Luke with Premium Aquatics. I apologize that this video is late. I have been feeling under the weather and feel like crap this very second. My son has been sick all week and uh, as much as I've dodged it the past few times, I have not been able to dodge it this round. So I have not been feeling good and it's caused for not being able to do nearly as much as what I want to do just because I do not have the energy and We'll leave it at that. So without further ado, let's get down to it. Uh, this is this is extremely important to your system. And what we're going to be looking at is lighting, but uh, we've already went over this light and the reef bright that I added on to it. Uh, but what we want to look at is what am I getting out of this light? What is the actual intensity from these T5s? From the additional reef bright that I added, uh, we'll throw, we'll take the reef brights reading so we can get an idea if I added the other one. Um, I took that one back off just because I didn't really need it for what I had in here, but we'll get an idea of what type of PAR readings that I'm getting out of it. How do we measure PAR? How do we measure the lighting output that we're getting in and making sure that it's, you know, within the range of what we're looking for? Is it even, does it even matter? Does it even matter? goes along I think with the benefit of having knowledge of your system and the more knowledge you can have the better off you're going to be because you know what your system is capable what its capabilities are what its uh, thresholds are maybe what you could say so I don't think it's going to kill you if you never found out especially when you have lighting like T5 metal halides LED could it help you to know it absolutely let me bring out this product that we're going to take a look at to figure out what my lighting is because I am going to be changing this out. As much as I love the ATI, I love the Reef Bright on top of it, I, this system is meant to test out products and turn over and test out another product. So pretty soon I'm going to be taking down the, the ATI fixture. We're going to put, be doing something else. Um, pretty soon I'll be taking this down and doing another light. I don't know what yet. Haven't decided quite yet, but that is the plan here shortly. But before I want to do that, I want to take PAR measurements so we can compare it to, uh, you know, this ATI without the Reef Bright, with the Reef Bright, Radions, AIs, you know, whatever we put on here. Just, it's nice to take a look at and, and compare them and see what we're, you know, really getting between some of these uh, manufacturers out there compared to obviously what they're claiming and, and uh, see what we can do for the system. So the more knowledge you get, the better off we are. Remember that. Don't forget as well, the Vectra S2 that you are uh, entering to win for is going to be a link in the description below. It takes you to our page where you can sign up. You'll have multiple ways to gain extra entries. I think there's up to five entries you can have. So uh, great ways to enter to uh, increase your chances to win this, the Vectra S2, not the L2. This is mine, hands off still. So don't forget about that. And for the product we're looking at today is the Apogee Quantum Sensor. This is the MQ510, which is a full spectrum sensor. We're going to open this up. This is exactly what you're going to get out of this, the MQ510. I've already opened it up, um, dismantled it, but basically it's your meter and your sensor, and that's it. The instruction manual for this is not included they like to save on paper which we all should so they save the trees and they say go to their website and download the pdf there it's very simple to uh, go onto their website apogee instruments uh, go to their support their download page and you can find the manual for this and you can print it off if you really want to or just save the pdf so you have it whenever you need so it's got a long cord so you can go ahead and set everything up as you need to um, and do whatever you want with this as far as you have if you have a large tank or if you want someone else holding this or you want it on a you know a, a stand while you're going across your tank but basically what we're doing here is i'm this is our sensor this is uh actually one older series it is now a nice blue um metal casing that they have as opposed to this gold but this is the sensor this is going to read our light and we want to try and keep it as 
straight as possible. I did not get the wand for it. There is a uh, submergible wand, which will give you, it's kind of like a selfie stick, but for this, and that allows you a lot easier to get down into the bottom of your system and get these readings. But this is our sensor. You got this little set screw here uh, that will help you um, attach this to those um, accessories. Then we have our meter here, which is very simple. All we're looking at here is the on off button, our sample mode, and then our up and down. Basically, we just need to turn this on. It's gonna start sampling. Here you can see we're reading uh, five, seven, 12. It's gonna go up as we uh, get our readings. And then up here is another small number. That is our logged reading. So if I were to hit plus or, or down, I should say, a logged reading was logged in at 81. So um, you can log the readings manually. You can have it do automatically if you want to. And then we can obviously go ahead and go back in the sample and we can go into mode. We can log our, our samples, we can reset them, delete them all. And I think you can keep up to 99 logs on here. Really simple, we have, on the back we have this little screw here that will open up for our battery that you can replace. And again, go on the instructions, make sure to read them. But essentially what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna put it underneath here and we're gonna get our PAR readings. And right here you can see we're at uh, what, Right here, dead center, not underwater. I'm right at three, oh, 430, basically. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get my light set up. Um, again, I because this is my system and I don't have a ton beyond basically softies, uh, you know, the Dunkin', the Candies, and the Anemones, um, I never went full blast with my lights. The, the reef brights do end up getting to 100%, but it's very slow. And the uh, ATI fixture, I think I have it maxed out at 50%. I have to look again. But So I don't do a full blast with these things. So I want to go and update this. I'm going to do some manually uh, adjusting on the light settings so I get everything up to 100%. And then we'll take our readings uh, and we'll show them. And then I'll do maybe what I set it at and then I'm going to do I'm going to turn off the ATI completely and just run the reef bright and get those readings that way you can get an idea of uh, what I'm getting added on to this ATI because of the reef bright and what you would get added on if you duplicated it because I could use another reef bright back there if I wanted to uh, one of the screws was a little loose so I ended up taking it back down and just didn't run it but if you wanted really heavily blue um, having two of these LEDs is amazing so that'll give us an idea of really what this reef bright brings to the table when you add it on beyond just color but uh and par as well because blue leds do give out a great par for it so that's going to be nice and then uh, we'll see what the ati does so let me get that set up here i'll be right back okay so i've got the apogee meter over here on the side desk with the gopro facing on it i'll put this in the little up here in one of these sides of the screens here for you to see as I'm moving the sensor around. Uh, the sensor, we're going to be just going around the tank. We're going to go in the corners, the front, uh, or I should say the corners, the middle corner, and then I'll do around where some of my corals are. And then we'll go from there. I'll tell you exactly where it is as it's reading. This Apogee sensor does have a two minute turn off time. So hopefully I don't forget that while I'm doing this like I already have. Uh, right now the ATI is 100% on for channel A and channel B, which I normally don't do. Normally it's just channel B, I believe, which has the six lamps. Channel A with two lamps is always off. I don't utilize that. And then I usually keep mine only at 50%. And the Reef Bright is 100% off right now. So we'll do this first and we'll turn on the Reef Bright, see what benefit uh, we get out of it. And uh, we'll go from there and do some tests. So let's start over here in the bottom corner on the right hand side. And this is going to be even a little block from the pump here. But here you can see what we're getting in the bottom corner. I'm going to raise it up to about midway. And then right at the level of the tank uh, of the water. Now one thing to keep in mind, this is very much in the front. I'm not going to have a great par just because my light fixture is a little bit pushed back. so. I'm not going to be getting as much out of it as what someone that may have this more centered, uh, the light fixture more centered. So here's middle, bottom, middle, middle, up the tank, 
and then right at the water level. So over here then, uh, not going to be much difference between this corner, but we'll take a look at it. Here's the bottom, the middle, and the top. So we're going to go on the middle right, and I'm not going to go all the way down just because there's a rock there. It's probably going to kind of get in the way. So we're going to go middle, front to back, and about middle up and down. This is where we're at here. And then right at the water level. And I should get fairly decent par on the ends simply because uh, the light fixture is spanning the, the um, width of my, or the length of my tank. Now if we go to the middle, we'll go right in front of this rock here down at the bottom. And then we'll go up to my zoanthid frag right here about midway up. And then we'll go all the way up to the water level. And then just so you can see uh, right where my anemone is, I'm gonna put the sensor right there, just to get an idea of what my anemone's getting. And then same thing on the left, uh, because I have this rock, I'm not gonna worry about going all the way down, but I'll uh, sit it here kind of midways to where one of my zoanthid frags are. And then right at the water level. I'm actually curious what it's going to read here down my by my pulsing zinnia. Not that they need anything specific, but just kind of curious. So this is at my pulsing zinnia rock I have down here. And then to give you another idea from some other corals, this is where my candy cane coral is right here. And then right here is where my Duncan coral is. Okay, so now that that's done, I turned on the Reef Bright. We are at 100% on the Reef Bright, as you can see here, nice and blue. Uh, gets a really nice pop of color into the tank. We're gonna go over uh, some of the same spots here and see what we get now that the Reef Bright is on. So, without further ado, this is just out in thin air. Packs a good punch, doesn't, I don't know what it does. 900, <whistles> okay. So down here in the front, at the bottom, front middle, and front top. Now keep in mind my Reef Bright is angled towards the center, so I may not get quite as much uh, input or, or as much beefed up uh, par in these areas, just because I'm at the front. Uh, we're in the middle, I'm probably gonna see a lot more. So here is the middle, bottom, middle, middle, and middle top. And then if we go over to the left side, bottom, middle, and top. Whoops. Now let's go over to the middle, to the front and back of the tank here. Oops, straighten this up, whoops. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, midway up the tank on the far right here. Turn that back on. And then this is at the top of the water. All right, so um, then we're going to the middle of the tank down below. Up by that zoanthid frag again. And then on top of the rock. Here is by, just a second, my GoPro fell off. Awesome, okay, it's back on. This is by the anemone. And then here's over on the left-hand side uh, by that one zoanthid frag again. And then up towards the top of the water. And then of course, just for reference, this is by the Paul Sanzinia rock. I apologize that my back turned to you, but we're doing work here, right? And then over here is by the candy cane coral. And then right here is the Duncan frag. And here, just to give you an idea of I think it's really cool to see what water does 
to something like this light and the penetration. So, you know, if I hold this sensor right out here, uh, just out in the open air, it's a huge difference that, uh, you know, right here, and then as I drop it down, and right here, bam, we go below the water level. And see what the difference is? Here's above the water, by maybe a half an inch, and below the water. And if we keep going down, we're about six inches down, and then about the 12 inches down. And what a difference it is between that and going all the way up to mid-air. I think that's cool. But So that's what we're looking at. Now I can see what you guys just saw and uh, be blown away or be surprised that it's not as good as what I thought it would be. But, you know, again, for my corals, I guarantee you this thing could blow them out of the water. Uh, you know, softies, uh, and a couple LPS and an Emni, I have more than enough light to uh, suffice for them. And even if I want to do SPS, I've got more than enough light for them too. So this has given us an idea uh, on what this ATI fixture brings to the table and what the Reef Bright does. Um, so now let's, uh, that's it. Let's uh, clean this up. We want to make sure that we are cleaning off the sensor. We don't want salt creep to build up on this because any little uh, debris on this lens can really hinder uh, the readings that you're going to get out of this. So uh, we want to make sure that we keep this as clean as possible. Take care of your unit. Make sure um, that you're washing that and taking care of it. So that's going to be it for me, guys. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Hopefully next week we'll be on time. Um, if you haven't already, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications so you stay the most up to date on this system as well as the other videos we're putting out. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you next week. Peace. Go check out the Vectra. Don't forget to enter. Thanks, guys. Bye.